8.10 is the time. Let's talk about this with Ivan Sampson. He's an immigration lawyer and joins us now. Good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. Um, what did you make of what uh, Swella Bradman had to say and the criticisms of her? I think she's confused. She doesn't really understand how the Refugee Convention works. She Sorry, can understand. I just stop you there? I am so bored with people saying that someone they disagree with is confused or they're just ignorant, they don't know what they do. What do you think the odds are that a lawyer by training, a highly educated woman who is the Home Secretary, doesn't understand how the Refugee Convention works? What are the odds of that? Let me explain. So she's saying that simply being gay is not enough to claim asylum. That's what she said in her speech. Let me take that point. Well, in Saudi Arabia, being gay invokes the death penalty. So if somebody comes to the UK and says to you, Julia, you're Home Secretary, if you return me to Saudi Arabia, I'm going to face the death penalty. What are you going to do? I think in lots of individual cases, we'd all say, OK, absolutely, we understand you're facing, if you're facing discrimination and persecution, then, then you should get a home here. Her point was that anyone who could say they are gay or, is a, or a woman in many countries would have a right to claim asylum under that refugee convention. And that's where the problem is, because it leads to too many people being able to claim asylum. And that convention wasn't aimed at that. That was the point she was making. Well, the point she was making is that um, we're going to have millions, if not a billion people coming in to claim asylum. It's simply not true. She didn't say billion. It didn't come well, anywhere close to that. She, she cited a quoted. report from a think tank saying that She's theoretically this 780 million people would yeah. be eligible. Yes, but what it, what it shows is the number of people actually claiming asylum, it shows how little... Uh, how, how uh, we, we don't take enough. What it shows is that, don't take, that we, we don't take enough. How many should we take? Small proportion of the global migration. Of course we do. Be of course we take a small proportion because most people who who are fleeing war or persecution go to the country next door. Ukraine uh, people go uh, to Poland. Syria, you know, people cross, you know, to Turkey. Of course they do. That we haven't got war next to us, and that's why. We, and we're an island state. Of course we're not going to have any uh, the numbers. You say we should take more. How many more should we take? We should take our fair share. What's our fair share? Well, if you look at France, they're taking 130,000. If you look at Germany, they take about 150,000. We we had last. So year, we should take what 100,000 or so. I think I, I, I'm not not sure what the figure is, but there is going to be a formula in which we should take our fair share. And that's what I'm saying. And really, what we saw Lebron was confused is she can't return economic migrants. That is her problem. And so because of her failure and incompetence to do that, she wants to attack and stop anyone claiming asylum. Surely that's But she's not, be. OK, she didn't say she wanted to, she didn't attack anybody individually and she didn't say she wanted to stop any asylum. Again, that's just complete mischaracterization of what she said. I listened and watched the whole speech. That's not what she said at all. I've read the transcript. That's not what she said. Um, the key thing is she's not able to return people because the way she's, we were talking on the show yesterday, the way the, inter the, the lawyers, the courts are interpreting uh, human rights legislation and indeed uh, the Refugee Convention to basically allow more and more people to have the say but also of course the abject incompetence of the home office and and it's very very clear look the home secretary can't even order whitehall civil servants to turn up to work in the morning so how is she so supposed to make them manage to process more than one every week which is what they're managing on average as uh, civil servants uh, to actually decide those cases i don't know how she's supposed to do it i mean this is this is the reality she's got the courts the civil servants and mainstream media uh, you know the the liberal left of agenda completely working against us. So why is it her incompetence? Uh, let me explain why. If you're an economic migrant, you should be returned to your home country. We all accept that, and that's absolutely right. No, we don't all accept that, actually. An awful lot of people on the left don't accept that. They well, think we should open the doors to everyone who wants a better life. Well, I can only tell you about the law, and the law for those coming here uh, illegally to claim asylum unlawfully mm. should be returned. But they don't say, I'm not an asylum. They don't say, oh, I'm an economic migrant, that's why I'm here. They throw away their passports. They claim to be from whichever country is the best one to get uh, your best chances of getting asylum. Uh, and then they know they're going to be here for two or three years before they're processed. Well, this is the problem because the Home Office can't properly identify them. And once it's identified them and refused an asylum claim, they're not removed. So. Well, that's because need. they can make legal challenge after legal challenge and the countries, no, no, the no, countries no, no, they no, come no, from Julia, don't want them back. Julia, at the end of the day, right, the government can certify mm -hmm. an application as clearly unfounded. Mm -hmm. The law says that. Within two weeks, they can be removed. The law says that. Mm -hmm. You can't even judicial review that if the government certifies okay. it. 
So if the government certifies an asylum application as clearly unfounded, they still don't remove anybody. Yeah. But we've only, got, yeah, we've only got about 1% of... The, again, yeah. I, I, so I, there's who, incompetence. Whose responsibility is that to remove people? It's yeah. the government. Yeah, no, absolutely. So and if we remove more people, we that. wouldn't have as many people come. But can I come back to the idea of our fair share? Because just because France and Germany, in my view, foolishly have, are in the Schengen area and allow free movement between their countries, although interestingly, it's noted yesterday that Germany is going to start imposing checks on the borders with Poland and the Czech Republic, which I think is the beginning of the end of the Schengen area. We saw Schengen area disappeared straight away uh, when we had COVID, didn't it? When all the borders were closed um, to everybody. Um, but, um, but, but, you know, just because, you know, they basically allow people to dock in Greece and, and, and Italy, travel freely into their countries, and there's nothing they can do about it, I'm not entirely sure why our fair share should be based on their foolish decisions about their own border controls. Again, this is the confusion about genuine asylum seekers who deserve protection and sanctuary in our country, as opposed to economic... The ones who arrived from France, where they could already be safe. Two. Yes, and we, we, we're having figures at the moment is about 50 percent are economic migrants now the 50 percent that are genuine should be allowed to remain here and we should take our we, I, I don't think you've got any 50%. basis to argue that it's 50 percent or, or or not i mean we don't we don't know these claims aren't being processed well i disagree with you because a select committee discussed this uh several times and and those are the numbers so we know that 50 percent are genuine we know that now the government's admitted themselves and of the 50 percent of the genuine are genuine over 95 percent uh, get asylum granted to them no. it's the economic migrants that are a problem the government takes two years to decide a genuine application that the government hasn't prosecuted one single smuggler not one has been prosecuted well no because they're not on our shores they're they're they're, they're in france we we don't they don't have to come to our shores okay well, I'm gonna, let, me, let me come back let me come back to this idea about you know even when you took a look at legal migration um, the you know the number of people who travel now the the movement between continents is huge now that's an issue a lot of people were very shocked to see those figures last year that 606,000 uh, net migrants more migrants came to this country than left this country a million in total people coming to live in this country a lot of British people go well, hold on a minute I thought we were supposed to have controls at our borders we can't seem to control illegal migrants arriving on, on dinghies or in lorries but surely the government should control the number of people who arrive uh, legally because they hand out the visas or the people who stay illegally because they know where they are they've kept in touch with them so so what should be done about that if anything well we, we have a shortage of workers it's never been easier to come to the uk to work fact the way the system is is, is uh, processed now employers decide who comes not the government once an employer has been granted a license, it's employers who decide who can come and who can't. So last year we had 600,000 net migration. It's the highest figure ever. So on one hand, the government's saying, well, we shouldn't have people from coming from other countries. And yet we have the highest number of migrants coming to the UK. Um, so I, I think the, 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 what the government is putting the blame game, dog whistling, because they know that the election is coming around next year. Why is it dog whistling to talk about this? I mean, look, I think they're, I, I, I'm the first one to criticise the government on their failures on this issue. It have been for many years, whichever political hue. But why is it dog whistle? Why does the, you know, the, why does the mirror, for instance, have the headline poisonous today? Well, it is poisonous. What's if you, poisonous? If you're a gay person landing on our shores and to hear the home sector, which you'd like her to protect you, and what she's saying is, I'm afraid we don't want to protect you, even though when we she didn't say that she said that no. the, she said no. that we've got a situation where the the convention was created in 1951 at a very different time, and now we're in a situation where we provide protection for pretty much anyone who's a woman or a gay person in numerous different countries. That's 780 million words. people. It's we know untenable. what the Home Secretary is about. We know what she's about. what she's about. Right wing rhetoric, uh, and what they they're against is right wing rhetoric. No. Yes, you know, you know, you know that the majority of Labour voters are in favour of border controls and limits on well, immigration. That's a big statement, Julia. Where are the, the where are the numbers? The, poll, the, the, data the polling from? is being pretty. Yeah. I think you'll find that's why a lot of Labour voters voted Tory in 2019. I think that the Labour government has got some sensible ideas about having a joint border, uh, joint police force with the French. But the only people that will stop the irregular crossing, not illegal, irregular crossing, is the French. That, they're the only ones that can do it. We need a treaty with the EU to force the French 
to stop the boats from disembarking. If the French wanted to stop the boats, they wouldn't need to be forced to do it. We can't force you the French to do anything. You know what they want, don't you? The EU? you what know, do they, they want? want? They want free movement back. That's what they want. Some form of free movement back. Yes. And well, I, well, what would be the point in stopping the boats if we had free movement again? Well, the French would be bound to then stop the boats under that oh. agreement. So, Ivan, I would, do you know what, Ivan, with all due respect, and I love you coming on the show, I'd love to live in your little world. It must be wonderful in that beautiful little imaginary uh, fairy castle you're living in. I